Hello Info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the biggest mysteries in the universe with some of the potential explanations and solutions to this mystery. And I'm of course referring to the mystery of FRBs, fast radio bursts. The unusual signals, radio signals that have been detected for roughly around two decades now, with many new signals discovered in just the last few years. But even since the original detection in 2007 of what's known as Lorimer burst that you see right here, the scientists haven't actually learned that much in regards to their origin and what exactly creates them. There are some speculations and some detailed theories, but at the moment there is no conclusive explanation for what's actually happening here. But some of the last few studies in the last year or so have managed to come extremely close to identifying some really important properties, which in theory can actually help us pinpoint where exactly these signals come from, what's causing them, and more importantly, how all of this can teach us about what happens in the universe as a whole. But of all the features discovered so far about FRBs and the feature that's kind of difficult to explain is of course in regards to the fact that some of them seem to be repeating FRBs and some of them seem to only happen once. Which of course is one of the main mysteries when it comes to their origin. It's not clear if it's actually the same phenomenon causing both events or if it's something entirely different. With some explanations suggesting that maybe FRBs are a result of some kind of a maser emission or radio emission that's similar to lasers in its nature, coming from very powerful objects such as young magnetars or potentially supernova remnants, or maybe even some unusual phenomena we've never seen before such as cosmic strings, something that's sort of predicted but has never been seen before. But with every new study, we seem to uncover new clues, and a lot of recent studies have actually uncovered quite a lot of really intriguing details we've never seen before. So for example, one of the most iconic FRBs out there, the FRB discovered back in 2012 known as 121102, is one of the most studied FRBs out there and is actually the first repeating FRB ever found. But unlike other radio bursts discovered, this one is also associated with another radio phenomenon that seems to be located in a relatively similar region. The phenomenon referred to as QRS 121102 that seems to be located in exactly the same galaxy and pretty much the same spot as FRB 121102 with QRS in this case representing some kind of a persistent radio emission of unknown origin. But an emission that is not a fast burst, so basically not an FRB. This is a persistent radio emission, which sort of implies that whatever is located in this galaxy seems to produce radio emissions relatively constantly and most likely is responsible for the FRB as well. And so by using some of the more powerful radio telescopes such as the Keck telescope, and by looking at certain frequencies, in this case focusing on 12 to 26 gigahertz, the scientists behind the study you can find in the description made some really intriguing discoveries about this radio source, which actually even allowed them to estimate the approximate size of the fast radio burst as well. And according to the scientists behind this paper, the source itself has to be relatively small, anywhere between 0.1 to maybe 1 light year across which in this case suggests that it has to be a compact radio source. So maybe some kind of an active galactic nucleus, maybe some kind of a supernova remnant that produces very powerful radio emissions, or maybe it's something we sometimes refer to as the Pulsar Wind Nebula, also known as PWN, with this one right here known as the Crab Nebula being the most famous. And if it is some kind of a black hole, for example, such as an AGN or active galactic nucleus, in this case, it would probably be a somewhat small black hole, possibly only about 100,000 masses of the Sun. But usually, AGNs also produce quite a lot of other emissions, such as X-rays and gamma rays. And in this case, only radio emissions have been detected from the source. And so by itself, it means that it's unlikely to be some kind of a galactic nucleus, and it's unlikely to be a very powerful source that usually is responsible for a multi-frequency emission. But at the same time, the source seems to be way, way too bright, too luminous to be a supernova remnant. So basically, it's most likely neither of those. It's neither a black hole nor a remnant from an ancient explosion. So what could it be then? Well, the most likely explanation, according to the scientists in this paper, is what's known as a plerion, also known as a pulsar wind nebula. With once again the most famous example being the crab nebula you see right here. And this is essentially a nebula that's sort of stuck inside a remnant, a supernova remnant, but it also has a central pulsar that seems to power the winds generated by the entire nebula. 
And although they do produce some infrared, optical and also X-ray and gamma ray emissions, for the most part they do produce very powerful radio emissions. Which probably just means that we're not seeing other emissions from the source because of the distances involved. But that's of course one of the explanations we have so far based on this new study. The other explanations usually focus on the other type of neutron stars, not pulsars, but magnetars. With at least one study from just over a year ago explaining how the magnetar in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, might have created the closest FRB to us. But several other studies released relatively recently focused on the other closest FRB to us, the extragalactic FRB, that came from a very well-known galaxy, the galaxy you see right here, known as M81 or Massey 81, the galaxy that's about 12 million light years away from us. Now, just over a year ago, we've talked about the detection of an FRB that seems to have come from the region where there is a globular cluster around this galaxy. And it was also from the outskirts of the galaxy, in the region where we expect a lot of much older stars. But, according to modern theories, usually magnetars are formed in much younger systems or in much younger locations. They also require really massive stars to be formed. So the presence of a magnetar that's able to produce fast radio bursts inside a globular cluster that seems to be in an ancient part of the galaxy was already a bit of a mystery. But the most recent study that you can find in the description below seems to have confirmed the original prediction and the original location. The FRB known as 2020-0120E definitively came from the region in this galaxy where there is a globular cluster that generally possess a lot of ancient stars on the inside. But in the past, a lot of previous studies have also discovered that certain global clusters also possess pulsars. And so one of the potential explanations in terms of their existence or the possibility of their existence has always been in regards to the proximity of stars in these regions. Because there are so many stars in such a small volume here, there's also a high chance for stars to potentially merge or to interact with one another. And in some binary systems, a star that's a little bit more dense and is just close enough to the larger, less dense star would generally start to siphon off a lot of material from the larger star and become larger and more massive in the process. And so, for example, if a white dwarf starts to siphon off a lot of materials from a typical red dwarf, it can eventually lead to a stage known as the accretion-induced collapse. And that's of course when a white dwarf reaches its mass limit, what's known as the Chandrasekhar limit. In this case, it normally explodes, resulting in a type 1a supernova. But that's not always the case. In some cases, instead of exploding, certain white dwarfs could potentially turn into neutron stars. And at least theoretically speaking, some of these neutron stars could become magnetars. Which at least theoretically could explain how certain magnetars could exist in these global clusters. And because the recent study has also discovered that some of the flashes seem to only last a nanosecond or just a few nanoseconds, it only implied one thing. Whatever formed these FRBs must have come from an extremely small region of space, something that was only a few dozens of kilometers across or even smaller. So only a neutron star could potentially produce this, with once again a magnetar very likely being the most likely explanation. Although interestingly, very similar nanosecond flashes have also been discovered around the Crab Pulsar. But if this is correct, it would be the first time the scientists have officially identified a magnetar in a global cluster. And it would also suggest that there's definitely different ways these magnetars can form, not just through a supernova, but through other means as well. And also, once again, since no X-rays or gamma rays were detected from this region, it sort of implies that whatever it is, it's mostly in radio light. So probably not a typical binary system, and probably not a black hole. But there is another study I really wanted to mention. And it's a study that identified something really unexpected and potentially really important. Something that nobody has ever seen before. Once again, coming from this repeating iconic FRB known as FRB 121102. And for this particular study, the scientists used the largest radio telescope we have available to us. The iconic 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope located in China. And in this case, it already detected over 1600 pulses coming from the FRB 121102. And it's been extremely prolific in detecting many FRBs across the universe. 
But in this case, when the scientists looked at these 1600 emissions coming from FRB 121102, they've actually found something really unusual. They discovered that not a single burst coming from the FAST telescope and coming from this particular source was polarized. With the polarization of light generally meaning that something is coming from an extremely magnetic source. But the thing is, other reports of the source from other telescopes did suggest that the light was polarized. So something was not adding up here. And that's of course until the scientists started to look at the frequencies detected by various telescopes. And they seem to have found a pattern. A pattern that seems to occur in a lot of different FRBs, repeated FRBs, detected by various telescopes. If an FRB was detected with a telescope using higher frequency, it was found to be highly polarized, usually consistent with magnetars. With none of the bursts detected by fast in lower frequencies being polarized. A pattern that they seem to observe around other repeating FRBs as well. And to the scientists behind this paper, this potentially meant only one thing. Every single repeating FRB seems to be surrounded by some kind of a highly magnetized plasma, potentially similar to what we see right here around a typical plerion. With the plasma surrounding the FRB producing the effects we're observing in polarization angle directly dependent on the frequency of the radio emissions. And so in this case, the received radio waves seem to come from multiple paths caused by various waves of plasma present around the source. And so the higher the frequency we observe, the more polarization is experienced. And in this case, it simply means that these active repeating FRBs could just be very unique types of sources of fast radio bursts with a lot of magnetized plasma surrounding the actual center. But the origins of this plasma are obviously still unknown. And though it obviously could be some kind of a pulsar nebula wind that we've seen around some other pulsars out there, it's still not entirely clear why such an unusual formation could form around a magnetar or around some other neutron star that's producing a lot of radio emissions. And so in conclusion, well, we seem to be getting closer and closer to the final answer of what exactly FRBs are, and we seem to be getting more and more ideas about what's possibly producing them, but there's still no definitive answer just yet. On that note, check out some of the previous videos about FRBs and about other mysteries of the universe, and also make sure to subscribe because we're going to be coming back to this and talking more about FRBs in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.